Oh. <laughs> bada bing, bada bam. Welcome to this week's Bacon a Mystery, Bacon a Murder episode. Okay, we're just gonna get into it because yesterday is Christmas by the time that you're watching this. Maybe it's been two days depending where in the world you reside, but here's what's going on. We're making a holly wreath out of some Chinese pancakes. <laughs> he keeps calling it the holy wreath and I'm like, no, 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 honey. I think it's the holly wreath and he's like, wait, but I'm pretty sure it's the holy wreath. So um, do with it what you will. <laughs> so all you're gonna need for this is some sort of puff pastry or some sort of pre-made frozen pancake. I'm using pancake because, um, I don't know, I had it and I didn't want to go buy some puff pastry. So this These is are doing. actually delicious. Really? They're like, almost like a Chinese croissant. It's really flaky wow. when you bake it. It kind of puffs up. Oh, they're so good. It can't and be they broken. they have Jay Chow on the package, so. Oh yeah, I was asking him, how much do you think Jay Chow got paid to be on a pancake package? Cause that's really confusing and out of nowhere. Why is he on a pancake package? But you know, when you go to Korea, uh -huh. Blackpink is on everything. Yeah, because we Every love Korea. Blackpink. Exactly. That's like Jay Chow. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, um, let's talk about overpopulation. <laughs> that got really dark. That got really intense. I'm like, right after Christmas, I'm like, should we be having babies? Should we? The overpopulation problem, is it a myth? Is it real? Is it trying to convince a certain demographic to not have children? Is it some sort of weird propaganda? I don't know, that's all too serious for today's video. Today's video, we're talking about overpopulation as if it's real, as if it's happening right freaking now. The word overpopulation itself is claustrophobia inducing. It makes you feel like everything is going to spiral out of control. You won't even be able to move around. Everywhere that you go, you're gonna be elbow to elbow with people surrounding you, breathing down your neck. Well, well don't, don't worry, worry because, because in the future, we have a solution for that. Welcome to my news channel called SSN, okay? That's social security number. <laughs> Stephanie Sue News, okay? In the last 50 years, we have doubled our population, tripled the amount of food and water that we use, and we have quadrupled the use of fossil fuels. Every four days, there is one million more people on this planet. How is the world going to cope with this explosion in population? There is only a finite number of square footage that we can house people in. The experts predicts that by the end of the decade, we will have a population of 10 billion people. This is not real, by the way. I think we have like 8 billion now, and unless you're you know, doing it while you're watching this video, I think it's gonna take a minute to get to 10 billion. But that's a scary number. There's drought, there's dust storms, climate change, hurricanes, too many people, not enough food, too many natural disasters for years. Every single news channel, every single website, every single social media influencer has been talking about this. We have been taken over by conversations out of how to effectively save humankind and the earth from overpopulation. We've got a random billionaire who's got Twitter fingers that's like, we gotta go to Mars. We've got some Jeff Bezos dude who has a penis shaped airplane that goes into space. A lot of people are coming up with some creative ways to get over overpopulation, okay? We are burning the planet to this ground. And at this rate, nobody is going to survive. That is the fear mongering. That is the conversation surrounding the movie, What Happened to Monday. This has been highly requested. I think this is like my third time watching this movie. It's so good. So let's get into it. Finally, the overpopulation, the conversations, the activists, the movements, it had been just too much. And it was all spearheaded by Dr. Nicolette Cayman. And government officials sat hand in hand with Dr. Cayman to come down with a new global law that would be enforced in every single country. A one child policy for every single person on the planet. A one child policy for every human on the planet called CAA, the Child Allocation Act. I'm not gonna lie to you, Dr. Cayman very much gives me Hunger Game vibes, like her hair, the way she stands in front of a concrete wall with a logo, like a monument, at her podium, her cadence, everything. So she's standing there giving a speech and this is kind of setting the tone for the rest of the movie. She says, we are one human family, sharing this one earth. Today, together, we make history with the Child Allocation Act. It is the first vital step towards preserving our planet and making a better future for our planet. 
Okay, so this is the most wild future I've seen in a while. In the movie, there's checkpoints popping up all around the world. You have to scan this ID bracelet, which the government issues to you, so it's not like you can recreate this bracelet. They scan it, and it shows your identity, and you must be the only child of your two parents. You don't get a bracelet unless you can prove you're an only child. And from this day forward, sure, regular siblings, um, they're not really fine. Like a lot of them get taken away into what they call cryo sleep, but some of them get away with it. But now, if you have more than one child, they will be taken into government enforced cryo sleep, where Dr. Kamen says that they will be kept for the future. Kamen says that she invented the system herself, and there's even ads playing all over the world where a creepy doctor is walking a child into a little capsule looking thing. It's like a little chamber, injecting her with a sedative while looking directly into the camera. The cryosleep will ensure that your child is resting humanely, free from hunger, safe from harm, while we work together to build a brighter, better future. Cryosleep, awake to a better world. That's so crazy. Like with that type of technology, yeah. instead of thinking about how to provide more resources, create mm -hmm. like reusable energy and all that, they're like, let's just uh, put people to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like with that kind of technology. I don't understand it either. <laughs> let's just like eliminate the human species. <laughs> yeah. Would you be want to put to sleep? What I want to put to sleep? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Politicians start doing interviews. Look, I know there might be some resistance, but with the one child policy, it, it may buy us some more time, okay? It may, and that's what we're looking for. So welcome to our future. The world is falling apart and you can't even cry about it with your siblings because your sibling is in an induced coma in a cryo chamber that looks like it should be on the set of a James Bond movie or maybe even Frozen, but you just know Someone's gonna be breaking these rules. You just know it. And there's gonna be an underground network of people who are helping others survive even if they're not the only child. We're talking about one of those people today. His name is Mr. Setman, and he's quite rich. He's not a billionaire, but he's rich. He's one of those like quiet, stoic, artistic type of guys. He doesn't talk too much, but he says a lot. He's one of those characters. You know, the wrinkles on his face. He looks like he's been through some but he's suffering in silence. We see him at this like weird hospital type situation. And Mr. Setman had a daughter whom he hasn't spoken to in years till he gets a call to come to one of those underground hospitals, basically a facility that, well, everyone would be severely punished if the government ever caught this, but the facility helps you give birth to your child in secret when this is your second child. So there's doctors, there's nurses, there's some medical equipment, but it's not gonna be state of the art. You're not gonna be able to really save lives if an emergency happens. When you are past the limit of one, this is like your last choice. So Mr. Setman's daughter went in there, not because this was her second child, this was her first pregnancy, but she was pregnant with seven children at once. What? Yeah, this is like a, you know those crazy reality shows of like the yeah. six tuplets, the seven tuplets? She had one of them. Yeah. Wow. And due to the under-equipped underground hospital and the fact that, I don't know, she's pregnant with seven children, that's already dangerous even in a state-of-the-art hospital. She ends up passing away. Wow. She called her dad, who has, she hasn't talked to in years, to come to the hospital. And by the time that he gets there, she's already dead. So now Grandpa Setman has to take care of all seven kids, all seven identical girls. He doesn't even know who the father is because he hasn't talked to his daughter in years. The doctor, of course, would never turn him in, but the question was pretty clear on everybody's minds. How will you manage? I don't know, I'm gonna have to. Have you thought about names? Well, there's seven. So, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So the girls aren't just named off the days. It's not like, oh my God, there's seven days in a week, so let me just call the girls seven you know, different names, right? It's actually to make it easier to remember because the way that they are going to live their lives, their name corresponds with the day that they will go out into the world. On Monday, Monday will go out into the world with the identity bracelet pretending to be Karen Setman. Tuesday will go out on Tuesdays pretending to be Karen Setman and so on and so forth. Each one will share a single identity as the single only child, Karen Setman, named after their dead mother, Karen Setman. And the rest of the six days that they aren't allowed to be out, they're gonna be stuck at home, never 
ever can two of them be out at the same time because they share one identity and there's checkpoints everywhere. To even get into your office building, a checkpoint. To get into restaurants, checkpoint. How you pay for things is your identity bracelet. Basically, another checkpoint. Nobody takes cash anymore. <laughs> I feel like they're inspired by China. <laughs> <laughs> he said, China. <laughs> so that part sounds fine, maybe, right? Like it sounds appropriate enough, but let's say while Sunday is out, on Sunday, someone decks her in the face. Someone punches her in the face and she comes home with a black eye. Well, guess what? The other six sisters have to punch each other in the face because you can't fake a black eye. Okay, just keep this in mind. They have to be exactly the same no matter what in order for this to work. But each one, when they're inside the house, they can have their own personalities. They even have to fill each other in on what happened that day for the others to be on the same page as them. So every single night they have an end of day meeting where they show their bracelets. So their dad was, or their grandpa was able to create these identity bracelets that were basically the identity bracelet, but like kind of replicas. So you could press a button and it would record from the bracelet. Mm, and then you I would see. come home and show them like, this is Kevin, this uh -huh. is what happened today. I saw this happen today. Fast forward to 30 years later, the day is Sunday. Sunday is going out to work. And I mean, the future is dark. She sees posters everywhere promoting cryosleep. She sees armed guards whose entire jobs are to enforce the Child Allocation Act, straight up kidnap siblings into armed trucks to be taken into cryosleep. Even while the mother is begging on the street, screaming, sobbing for her child, they don't care. Karen watches the intense scene and then goes to the market to buy a Norwegian bat for dinner. Food is scarce, mm -hmm. okay? She heads back home, and everything you do, you have to scan your identity bracelet. Even going into the apartment building, that's your key. Which, side note, just think about the logistics of that. There's a doorman at the building that Karen Setman lives in. His name is Eddie. And Eddie can't help but be intrigued by Karen. So she's walking in with the dinner in the bag, and he asks her, Tell me, Miss Setman, what's your secret? Sorry, Eddie? What's your secret? Last night, you were puking in the planter outside, and today you look... Fresh as ever. How do you do it? <laughs> and then she walks into the elevator and presses the button. Good night, Eddie. But I mean, think about the small nuances that people might notice about you that are different from day to day. It's kind of bizarre. I feel like it would give me uncanny valley. I don't think that I would assume it's seven different people living the same life, but I would assume like something is off about this person. Like, it, I don't know what it is, but it's kind of unsettling. That's how people feel about Karen Setman. So she goes home, cooks the bat with mashed potatoes, and sets it down to eat with her six sisters. All seven of them are eating, and you can tell each one of them has like a completely different personality. So Monday is how you think of Mondays. She's super straight-laced. She's by the book, so proper, wants everything to be done perfectly. Guys, this is not a joke. We need to take this seriously. She's like that type of person. Then Tuesday, she's got red hair. She has to wear a wig when she's Karen. She's got red hair. She likes like long, flowy, maxi skirts. She's kind of like the artistic, almost like, you know, um, free-spirited type of person. Wednesday is the athletic. She's the one that has a punching bag in the apartment. She's the one lifting weights. She would definitely be like a fitness influencer. Thursday is like the mean negative one. She just like hates life. She hates everything about everything and everyone. Friday is a hacker. And you know this because she wears a beanie. That's how you know in a movie she's a hacker when girls wear beanies. Mm -hmm. Saturday, she wears pink and she's got blonde hair. She's literally Saturday. She's like what you would imagine a Saturday to be. She loves a party. She loves to get drunk. She loves, you know, a good one night stand. And then Sunday, she's just kind of like the nice one. She's like the mother of the group, even though she's the youngest of the group. So Monday was the firstborn and then all the way down to Sunday. So some of them, you know, are goofy, lighthearted. Some of them hate the idea of eating a bath for dinner. And Sunday scold Saturday. Like Saturday, you have to tell us everything. You didn't tell me that you puked in a planter and Eddie was asking me and I look stupid. Stupid. How can you be so stupid? We're supposed to know everything. And Monday joins in and she seems like the most stressed out of the group. And finally, Sunday asks Monday, everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just, um, I have my big presentation tomorrow. Our big presentation. Right, right. And then another sister says, well, if we do get this promotion, it's all thanks to Friday, the hacker girl. 
Friday is like, you know, she's the cool one. She's the smart one. And she says, no, 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 it's, it's all of us. You guys did all the legwork. I just crunch numbers, that's all. And they all agree, seven minds are better than one. And with that, we get a flashback to when they're young and their grandfather was alive in the same apartment teaching the girls how to live their lives. You must work together. Collectively, you're stronger together than you are alone. In time, we will select a career that capitalizes on your joint skills. And he has them lined up on a desk doing math problems on their little paper. They're all identical, but they're completely different. Some of the girls, they're so fast with math. Some of the other girls are just cheating. Some of them are just giggling. I mean, it's insane. But ever since they were young, Friday always showed a natural talent at math. Mr. Setman made sure to do everything that he could for his granddaughters before he died. He created fake walls and fake doors in the house so that the girls could hide behind these false walls in case people came over. There would be a closet and behind a mirror, right? The mirror would move to the side. There would be a little closet for the girls to hide in. So, wow. yeah. The who, best grandfather, huh? Best. Whoever's day it was, he ran the drills to make sure that they could all get it in time, in quickly. So if there's a knock on the door, they would set a timer, he would open up the, he would press a button, open up the hidden compartment, they would all grab their toys, they would lift up their Murphy beds to hide into the bookshelves again, because why are there like three beds when there's one kid? They would have to take extra toys because again, one kid, why do you have so many toys? How do you go from looking like it's a house of seven girls to a house where just one child lives? Mr. Setman wow. even created, you know, the identical identity bracelets for them, right? And when they're about eight, they start going out into the real world, to real school. Mr. Setman told them, in here, I want you to be who you are. Be as creative as you want, dress as you wish, be whatever you want to be. But outside of these walls, you will all take on the singular identity of Karen Setman. Can, can I play outside, finally? Yes, you can, as long as it's your day. But you can never go outside at the same time, no matter what, even with your bracelet. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you can never tell a single soul that you're a sibling. That's very important, do you understand, girls? Okay, we begin tomorrow, starting with Thursday. And every morning, he would get them dressed and ready to head out while the other sisters watched in fear or in envy that their sister goes out. I mean, imagine how nerve-wracking it is. Your fate depends on your siblings as well. Would you trust your sister with your life? I would, but I don't think she would trust me. I'd go to school and I'd be like, so the other day my si- <laughs> 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 So the first checkpoint was the most nerve-wracking because they needed to see if the bracelet even worked. Mr. Setman gave her the confidence, it worked, and Thursday was ready for her first day at school as the one and only Karen Setman. When she was done, she was to have the end of day meeting with everyone, all the sisters, same time every single day. You have to share every single moment of that day with your sisters just in case because you might think it's the stupidest thing. Imagine someone borrowed a pencil from you and the next day they bring you two pencils and you're like, what's this for? That's weird, right? So Thursday, would you like to go ahead? And he presses a button on her bracelet, which doubles as a camera, and it starts displaying her day in order. So this is how you can show the sisters, like this is Dave, he hit on us, you get it. And that's how the sisters survived into their 30s. For decades they did this, and it did not get any easier. Because as they're getting older, I think when you're young, and this is new, going out is new, it's, it's exciting, you're waiting for that day of the week every single day. But as you get old, I mean, is this your life forever? And they don't all get along. Monday is like the perfect Karen Setman, content to do what she needs to do to survive, content with just going out one day of the week. She considers the sisters her siblings. Meanwhile, the other sis sisters, I mean, they're miserable. One of them even suggests, this is Thursday, by the way, and she goes, I mean, why don't we just turn ourselves in? <laughs> why don't we just go into cryo sleep? It's not even that bad. Sunday's annoyed, oh, not this again. We've talked about it. What's the point if you wake up and everyone you love and the world as you know it is gone already? No, because we'll go to sleep together Sunday. We wake up together when this world is no longer this way, when the stupid Cayman is no longer running for parliament, when the reins are pulling in tighter around us, when we can have our own lives, have relationships instead of random one night stands with men who will never even mean anything. Just have meaningful relationships. The only time we get to go out is one day of weekend we can't even be ourselves we have to be karen f setman we have to be a fake person 
and then we're trapped in this place for six days a week? Th this isn't a life. This is a slow, painful, agonizing, soul-sucking death. Saturday with blonde hair and wearing all pink rolls her eyes. It is what it is, Thursday. Just get over it. Which, side note, she has to wear wigs, you know, when she goes out. So Tuesday and Saturday, they have to wear wigs. But she looks kind of like Regina George's mom, like the pink track suits, the blonde hair. So it's very interesting to see all the personalities that are clashing in this situation. Anyway, another flashback to when they were young. Saturday was in her tutu, ready to go to recital because she loves ballet. Now, this is when they're young. Mr. Setman went to take her, but Thursday, the one that f***ing hates her life, she snuck out the window with her skateboard after Saturday already went out. She just wanted to be outside, not even with someone, just alone, skateboarding. But later, when Mr. Setman and Saturday get back from recitals, he realizes Thursday is missing and the whole house goes on lockdown. The girls are forced to hide in the closet and then everyone freezes. Someone's at the door. Is it someone from the Child Allocation Act coming to take all six kids, leaving just one? Which one would even be the one to survive? Mr. Setman reached into his safe, pulling out his gun, and with a big breath, he God. opens the door. And there was Thursday crying with her skateboard. I just, I fell off and I didn't know what to do. He looks her up and down, her entire arm is scraped off. <gasps> her is scraped up, but worse than that, half of her index finger is falling off. It was nearly severed. No doctor? And instead of being thankful that she was saved, she was whining like a little She comes in there and she's like, I hate being Karen Setman. I wish I was never born. I hate this life, I hate it. And Grandpa screams, enough! Do you want to be taken away? Do you want to get frozen for the rest of eternity in that god-awful machine and never see me or your sisters again? And with that, Yikes. he had Thursday stand there while he lined up all the other sisters. He numbed them with an injection and he told them to stay still while he pulled out a big kitchen knife <gasps> and heated it up on the stove. I warned you, everything you do affects each other. He heated up the, he had, he heated up the knife. What happens to one of you happens to all of you. Monday, come here. I need you to be brave. Set an example for your sisters. And he grabs her hand on the cutting board. No. Will it hurt? Yeah. Don't move. And with that, he chopped off half of her index finger while she screamed. And all Thursday could do was cry while watching. I mean, this was all her fault. And Thursday was the one that hated her life now still. She's the one that wanted a relationship. She's the one that would rather be all frozen together. Like, she seems like the problem child out of the group, right? So the next Monday, Monday's not ready for her day. She's throwing up in the toilet. She feels sick about this presentation. And Sunday's holding her hair back. These two seem the most responsible. You're burning up, Monday. Are you running a fever? No, I'm fine. Are you sure? Maybe you should switch days with Saturday. Saturday butts in. I can do it. I can be Monday. What's the presentation? I can totally do it. There is no success without struggle. Monday looks back at her. Shut up. And with that, she gets ready to leave and she puts on the iconic red lipstick that they all wear when leaving. She puts on her professional outfit, grabs her umbrella, and as she walks out, the doorman is reciting another poem by Langston Hughes. Now, just a couple days ago, one of the girls had walked in and she goes, who is that by? And he said, Langston Hughes, you don't remember? And now as Monday walks out, she goes, Langston Hughes again? You sound like a broken record, Eddie. Have a good day. <laughs> so it's like, you know, these slight differences. She rushes out and when she gets to the gates at work, she scans her bracelet and the guards notice she seems angsty. The guard asks her, in a rush, big presentation today. Lines are getting longer out here. I'm on patrol every Monday. Yeah, woman gave birth right on the line. Of course, it happened when I was on my shift. You're kidding, right? A woman gave birth on the line? Yeah, Mondays are the worst. I, had, I hate checkpoint duty, but at least I get to see you. <laughs> she smiles professionally and the computer beeps. Karen Setman had been chosen for random questioning. All right, what's your name? Karen Setman. Do you have any siblings? No. Are you carrying any contraband? No. Are you sure? Do I have to check your body? She smiles, and he lets her go through, but not before looking back at it, looking at her butt, staring at her butt as she walks away, okay? Wow. 
intense. And it looks like Seven Minds is better than one because Karen has a big girl job working in this huge fancy bank and in the elevator she runs into mother freaking Jerry. Immediately when I saw Jerry get into the elevator I was like this guy is trouble. This is the sleazy looking colleague that looks like he would definitely touch your butt in the coffee break room. He's definitely the one that's like let me just move past you. There's literally just us two in a room. It's not even a hallway you perv. Like, that's him. Karen? Jerry? And so Karen goes, looks like it's the big day, huh? We'll see which one of us gets the promotion, Karen. I think it's ready. I'm very excited. I need to try this. So dropping. Is it too cooked? I do strawberry. Whip topping. Ooh. Okay. That looks cool. Yeah. Very pretty, a blueberry in between. I tried to get mint, I couldn't find mint. So, uh, I got parsley. That? Now how do you eat it? That's what I'm saying. Oh my. Oh, oh my. my. Not bad, not bad, okay. Mm. Not bad, okay, I like it. Okay. <laughs> is it good? No. The parsley smell is throwing it off. Let me try a bite with a blueberry. Mm. It's pretty good. It's very different. Mm. And he tells her, you know, all these years I've been trying to figure out your angle. I always thought with a body like that, you would f your way to the top. But as it turns out, you're a frigid bitch. So Karen says, what? Because I, si because I find you repulsive? No, because you're not interested in anyone. Working here night after night like a f robot. You think you have us all fooled, don't you? I have no idea what you're talking about, Jerry. Yeah, you do. And as Karen leaves the elevator, leaving Jerry, but before the door closes, he calls out, Karen, I'm on to you. And you would think that the sisters are gonna hear all about this threat at the night, right? When she goes home to do the end of day meeting? Well, no, because Monday is missing. The rest of the sisters are sitting around anxiously waiting. They try calling her, pinging her bracelet, everything. I mean, this is so unlike Monday. She would have called. So Friday, the tech hacker girl, she rushes to the computer, tries to GPS track her bracelets, but the GPS tracking is off. She's off the grid, meaning whatever that means. Maybe she was in an accident. They start running a scan in all the hospitals, police records, which like, I don't know how they do that, but they do it. Friday is doing all of it. When one of the sisters brings up a good point, I never thought about it, but what happens if Monday is dead and the authorities find her before we do? Then Karen Setman no longer exists and all of our lives are over. Saturday sips her alcohol. Jeez, she's only a few minutes late, guys. Monday has never been late for an end of day meeting, ever. But she was late now. She wasn't even here on Tuesday. So now Tuesday had to go to work, not knowing if she was going to work and everything would be normal or she would be dragged away at the checkpoint. Tuesday is a bit more of one of the chill sisters. She's got the red hair. She's always braided in pigtails. She loves long fully skirts. She loves her pot brownies. She's kind of like a soft girl free spirit. She's actually sitting on the toilet eating a pot brownie while Saturday is doing her makeup. When Thursday comes over, really a pot brownie? I have a really bad feeling about this, guys. Remember the last time two of us were out there at once? And she picks up her half of her index finger. That was bad, guys, that was bad. Thursday gets done. Look, you gotta figure out what, where Monday is. We gotta act like everything's normal. That's the only way. Yeah, easy for you to say. It's not your day. What if we've been listed? Listen, if Karen Setman was listed, the Bureau would have kicked in the door and we would have all been processed by now. Friday hears from the doorway. Well, technically speaking, one of us would get to live. One of the siblings. True. And with that, Tuesday was out. Everything feels on edge. Even when the doorman mentions he didn't see her coming in last night. Oh, yeah, it, it was after hours. I let myself in. And with that, she nervously walks to work and puts on her shaky wrist to the guards. They scan her and green light. She's allowed through. But that still doesn't mean anything is clear or good. Monday could be found dead at any moment, which means the sister's truth would be exposed. Or what if Monday was taken? Where the hell did she go? And remember, she didn't have their last night meeting, so nobody knows what Monday experienced on Monday. They basically don't even know that Jeff threatened her in the elevator. They know nothing. So when Tuesday gets into their office, she puts on an earpiece in her ear that connects her to the sisters. We got the promotion, guys. 
The sisters are like, okay, stay focused. It seems like Thursday, the one that hates her life is the one that's focusing on everything, and Friday. They're the two taking charge on this one. Stay focused, Tuesday. Check the calendar, check the desktop, anything that might give us a clue as to where Monday is. And in that moment, Karen's assistant, Vicky, walks in. Here you go, and I have your schedule ready for the day whenever you're done. Thank you. Oh, and Vicky, when's the last time you synced my tablet? 9.13 this morning? Why? Oh, I think I might have forgotten to sign out last night. No, you did. You left early to celebrate, remember? Of course. Um, Vicky, remind me, where did I go again? To your favorite bar, Harry's? Harry's, yes. Thanks, Vicky. You're welcome. And as Karen walks through the office to leave for the day, she sees Jeff staring her down. Creepy, creepy, mother oh, well, no, his name is Jerry, okay, sorry. Jerry. Anyway, after work, she rushes to Harry's bar and grabs another drink with the bartender, and she's trying to be casual. Last night. <laughs> Do you remember what time I left? Mm, you only stayed for one drink. You barely touched it. I think that colleague of yours put you off. Cunt, yeah. Uh, which one of them was it again? You know the douchebag in the suspenders? Jerry, I think. After leaving Harry's, she called her sisters. Monday and Jerry argued right before she left the bar. He's on to us. I f knew it. F sold us out. But yeah, if he did, why aren't we listed? I don't know. Tuesday, you gotta find him. You gotta call him. Find out what he knows. Are you nuts? He's our only lead, Tuesday. And as Tuesday is walking, she sees guards surround her. But they're not the ones that are armed. They're in suits, which I think is scarier. Miss Setman, step into the van, please. I'm sorry, what is this? Who are you? They pull out a badge. Child Allocation Bureau. Step into the fucking van. And she's forced into the van where the woman in power suit scans her bracelet, turns off her location, and they rush into a building that looks like the freaking Pentagon. And as she's being dragged away, she's begging them for answers. I don't understand. Can you please tell me what I'm doing here? And remember that guard that questioned Monday the day before at the gate? He sees her being taken away. His name is Adrian, by the way. And he looks shocked. And then Tuesday finds herself in this completely white cell with nothing but a bed, and it looks like a psychiatric hospital. And there in the corner of the cell waiting for her is Dr. Kamen, the evil woman that's running for parliament. Why the hell would she care about Tuesday? And she looks like pure, dripping, vile, disgusting evil. Like, they really did the casting well on this one. She extends her hand for Karen to shake. What a pleasure to meet you, Miss Setman. I'm Nicolette Kamen. I know who you are. Can you please tell me why I'm here? Oh, you poor child. I'm amazed that you made it this far. This must be all some big mistake. I don't know what you're talking about. Seven children. <gasps> what was your grandfather thinking? Do you have any idea how much food and water was taken out of other people's mouths so you could be here today? If everyone was as cruel and selfish as you and Terrence Setman, the world would end tomorrow. Yikes. Miss Cayman, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm the only child. For your sake, I wish that were true. One of the guards hands her a tablet. There are five of them left, Miss Cayman. All the rotten eggs are in one basket at the house, so there's GPS tracking on the rest of them. Oh my gosh. Is there another way to handle it? Not if you want to keep it quiet. And it was clear that the guards are going to go quietly, dispose of the sisters so the news doesn't break, that there were seven sisters who managed to break the rules. None of them were going into cryo sleep. They're going to get sk***ed. Because think about it, it undermines the whole thing. Other people are going to think they can do it, or they, they're, they're going to think the system is so dumb, we might as well just all riot and have a revolution. It would give people hope, it would undermine the regime. So Tuesday gets pulled to a corner by the guards, and one of the guards pulls out a knife, and she starts screaming, wait, please, please, stop, I work in a bank, and I can get you some money, we can make some sort of deal. And Nicolette, before she walks away, she turns around and says, funny, that's what the last one said. And she walks away implying that Monday said the same thing. Leaving the guards and their knives with the screaming Tuesday, and the sisters have lost complete contact with Tuesday. She's off the radar just like Monday, and Wednesday is riled up. We can't just sit here, we gotta do something. We gotta do something, we can't do nothing. And the computer flashes red. They see the cameras outside the building, men with weapons drawn are trying to get in. Thursday, Thursday, what do we do? Thursday. Eddie sees the door get opened, and he asks, oh, uh, did you skip resident or visitors? And they shoot him dead straight <gasps> in the head. What? And Why they, would they do that? And as they get in the elevators, they say, just visiting. And the elevators close.
They head up to find the girls. So this is not the Child Allocation Bureau. They've hired people to just make the girls go away. Oh. So these are not government officials. They're hitmen. They're pretty much cleanup men, hitmen, yeah. And they head up to find the girls. The men in black hoodies, they brought an eyeball in a Ziploc bag to scan in the girls' door to get in because it's a retina skin. So it's either Monday or Tuesday's freaking eyeball. What? They get the door open and all the girls are inside the safe place behind the mirror. And Thursday is the one that's out trying to get grandpa's gun. But when she opens the safe, the gun is gone. Why? The men head straight for the mirror safe, pulls out a book on the shelf, revealing the button, and he presses it. The mirror opens, and there is Saturday, tear-streaked face, shaking in fear. Step out, all of you. She's frozen. Now! She puts her hands up in fear and walks out. That's it. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Get out. This way. Come on. Saturday looks behind her to see Sunday and the rest following. Meanwhile, Thursday has a giant pipe she's ready to use as a weapon and she's sneaking up on the guards. She sneaks up on the men before they realize one of the girls is not in the closet, bonks them on the head, causing the other two to point their guns at her and try to shoot her down. But Wednesday grabs one of them, knocks the gun out. Like it's a whole fight scene, okay? And it's a whole chaotic fight that ensues. And primarily the women are being beaten, but they're putting up quite a fight. They're pouring boiling water on their faces, the guards hitting them with hot irons, strangling them with like wires, and in the end they managed to kill all three guards. But in the chaos, Sunday was shot in the stomach. They all crowd around her and her face is going pale and she keeps saying, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. You're not gonna die, Sunday. I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. No, you're Sunday. You're supposed to be the believer. I don't know what I believe. I don't know who I am. And those were her last words before she took her last breath. And all the sisters came to the realization that their sister was dead. And not only that, but Monday and Tuesday were probably dead too. Their home is gone. It's not just because it's been shot up in the chaos, but also they're not safe here anymore. They're not safe anywhere anymore. And they're definitely not safe together. They can never be together again. Meanwhile, Dr. Kamen gets news that the Setman team have failed to capture the other sisters. And so she tells her head little guard in charge in the suit, his name is Joe. Joe, last night I dreamed that this building erupted into flames and all the siblings crawled out. There were so many of them, a sea of bodies. I know what you feel for these children, but this is on their parents, not you. Sometimes I think to hell with it, to hell with everybody. Humans will never learn, to hell with the world. Dr. Kamen, you are our only hope, our last chance, we need you. And I need you, Joe. Be careful and get those girls. Do not underestimate the Setmans. Ma'am, if we officially list them, they'll be flagged at the first checkpoint and processed within hours. Seven siblings living to adulthood, it would destroy my credibility. No, we have to keep this localized. They're trapped inside the department and they know it. Besides, we have another complication. And she shows him a tablet of Jerry. Make that a priority. Basically, he has to go kill Jerry first. So it seems like Jerry's the one that turned them in. And now Jerry has to die because they're trying to keep it all the secret. And if Jerry yeah. knows, then that's bad too. So it seems like Joe is her right-hand man. She cares for her career more than anything and is willing to do horrible things to children for it. Meanwhile, Joe believes in this sick, twisted mission. It seems like he has hatred for the kids. He has hatred for the adults for having more than one kid, for existing, for humans for having more than one child. And Jerry seems to know about the Karen sisters, so they need to deal with Jerry first and then deal with the sisters. That's the plan. Because the sisters wouldn't tell someone, but Jerry might go around telling people, guess what I just found out. Back in the apartment, the sisters go through the guard's pockets and find the eyeball in the bag. Thursday grabs it, about to vomit, goes to the front and scans the eye. It's Tuesdays. Oh my god. Oh my god. Now what? What the f*** are we doing? We can't just, we have to get out of here, guys. We can't just sit here. There's gonna be more people coming. Let them come. We'll f***ing kill them all. We can't do that, okay? You th we barely took down three, and they killed three of us. How many more do we have to die? What should they do at this point? What do you think uh, is the smart thing to do? I would go public. Go public, all right. I would go and public. Then what? What's Start your a message? Movement. What's the message? The message is, <laughs> the government. <laughs> <laughs> one child policy how are you just putting people to sleep like the love of siblings is yeah. some of the strongest love that exists 
there's got to be people that are going to stand by them, yeah, no? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I would go public, but they're like, no. We gotta think for a second, okay? Four of us out there at once, the bureau agents, the checkpoints and sensors, we won't last for two seconds. Besides, we always work better as a team, in an environment that we can control. Besides, those guys weren't bureau. We would have been listed by now, and this place would have been crawling with agents. Those aren't agents. That means somebody wants us to disappear then. Yeah, but the question is why? Now it's Wednesday's turn, the next day. Yeah, they stayed the night. <laughs> Wednesday's gotta go out. And instead of dressing up with red lipstick, power suit, and heels like all the Karen Setmans do, she's wearing all black, a hoodie to cover her face, and Friday equips her with a camera on her hoodie. That's gonna give them real-time visual and audio of everything she sees. She grabs one of the guard's guns. It's user-locked, meaning they need his fingerprint, but it won't, so it won't fire, but hopefully it's intimidating enough. It's pure intimidation. Wednesday's mission for the day is she needs to go out, find Jerry and find out what he knows and find out if he knows where they took Monday. Look, I don't know, the whole thing is terrifying. Each day that it's theirs, they go up missing and end up dead. So there's that. Jerry lets her into his posh apartment. Hello, Karen. You're cutting it quite close. I told you I'd give you until Wednesday and it's the morning of, but I'll consider it Wednesday. So what's it gonna be? What's what gonna be? Do we have a deal or not, Karen? Deal? What deal? Playing dumb doesn't suit you. You pass on the promotion, it goes to me, and your secret stays safe with me. Karen is pissed. Jerry is a slime ball, and he might be the reason that two of her sisters are dead and her life is falling apart. She pulls out the gun. You mother how long have you known? Well, you, you should be very happy that, that it was me that found the contract. What contract? Are you f serious? What's wrong with you? Answer me. What f***ing contract? The, the 407 C, C funds transfer your contract with Cayman. Nicolette Cayman? Yeah, your new VIP client. And the sisters are hit with the realization. Mm -hmm. And they're listening from the apartment. Did you guys know about this? No. Wait, what is it? Monday has a contract uh -huh. with Nicolette Cayman. Nicolette Cayman is the, the doctor. The doctor. What does that mean? Exactly. Wait, wait, where is the contract? It, it's on my tablet. Calm down. Show it to me. And before she can, a shot fires through the window and hits Jerry square on the forehead, killing him. And then another shot fired at Wednesday, and she manages to jump behind the couch, swoop over to the kitchen island to find the tablet, runs into the bathroom, right? She's closing all the blinds as she go, and the sniper across the building states that he loses visual, and a whole team of agents swarm the place. Wednesday starts freaking out. She asks her sisters for help. Guys? Guys, are you there? What's the best way out of here? The front door. And in that moment, five men burst through the front door. Yes, not an option, not an option. And she starts running through the apartment and hides in the bathroom. She knows the only way is to fight. So when a man comes in to catch her, she hides behind the door and strangles him with the shower curtain and he falls to the ground unconscious. She cuts off his finger and uses his gun to take down the rest of the men. Joe, the main guard, keeps walkie-talking the guards upstairs asking if they need backup since they have, I don't know, 150 Guards downstairs waiting to do something, no response. Finally, one of the guards comes falling out the window with 200 bullet holes in his stomach. Well, what in the world? I guess that's the answer we need. Come on, go. And he sends more guards. The sisters panic hearing that and they tell Wednesday to jump out the window. It's a three-story drop, but there's a dumpster and it should soften the blow. Wednesday puts all her faith, so she transferred the contract to her bracelet, by the way, in this time. She transfers all her faith into this breaks through the glass and lands on her back in the dumpster. And the dumpster is f***ing empty. <laughs> shit, shit, shit. Are you okay? Are you okay? Wednesday, can you hear me? Are you okay enough to run? Oh, I forgot. Wednesdays are trash pickup days. Should be okay. Where do I run? Um, alleyway to the right, make a left. There should be a door. Head into the door. And so she ends up in this alleyway, inside of a shelter for people without homes, and they're the best. They hate child allocation police, so they start throwing rocks at them as they're chasing through Wednesday. They're throwing open fires at them, slowing them down for Wednesday. It's almost a heartwarming war moment, even though they're not doing it for Wednesday. They're just doing it out of pure hatred for the, the Bureau, but you get it. And in the meantime, the sisters are distracted from helping Wednesday, because there's a freaking knock at the door. Their cameras identify a CAB agent at the door. Saturday says that she wants to take over this time. And um, the other sisters hide in a room and Saturday opens the door and she's got blonde hair. It's the guard from the office, the one that was hitting on Monday, remember? Oh, yeah. Hey, nice look. Trying something different? Yeah. 
Why not, right? <laughs> I called your office. They said that you were out sick. I know I'm not supposed to call, but when I saw you at the bureau... You saw me at the bureau? Yeah, I had to um, go drop off some stuff. Super boring stuff. Well, aren't you gonna invite me in? The sisters are hiding, but they have to cut communications with Wednesday in order to make sure the guard doesn't see the computer screen lit up in, I don't know, with their little f espionage going on. So they shut Wednesday out, leaving her to fend for herself outside. And they watch as the guard comes in and immediately starts staring at Saturday and starts choking her. What the f And it's a tense. Everyone starts freaking out. Saturday panics. Please don't do that. What are you doing? Oh, shit. Are you serious? Sorry, I thought you'd like that kind of stuff. What is going on? Um, just one moment, please. And she rushes into the room and makes a beeline for Thursday. What the hell is going on? Are you f***ing him? What? No? Are you the one seeing him? You look quite comfortable and intimate out there. No, Thursday. It's called acting. How do I know that you're not acting right now, pretending that you're not the one f***ing him? I've never seen that man in my whole life. Well, you need to, you need to go out and get him to take you to his place and find out which one of us he's been seeing. What? Have you lost it completely? You want me to go with him? I think he wants to fuck me. Yeah, no shit. Friday walks over, gives her a chip into Saturday's bracelet. Get, it, get your bracelet close to his and we can try to access his bracelet. That way, it'll be a gateway into the bureau system. Hmm. What? 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 What if he catches me? I'm sure you know a few tricks to distract him. I don't know any tricks. Saturday looks nervous. Remember how she's like the party girl? She's never been with anyone. Mm. You've never been with anyone? She swallows back tears in her eyes, grabs her jacket to leave. The minute the door closes, they run back out to turn the computers on. Wednesday, so just, so just to give you the count, Monday and Tuesday are gone, presumably dead and eyeballless. Sunday is dead. Wednesday is running for her life in the cinematic rain. Saturday is going to have sex with a bureau agent. Thursday and Friday are left to help Wednesday at home. The numbers aren't looking good. They told her to get to the roof and the only way out is to jump from the roof to the building next to it in the f***ing rain, which is terrifying. And the, the sisters keep telling her, you've been training your whole life for this. You can do it. You can make that jump. And the agents are running up the building. They know she needs to do it now. She's running out of time. So she starts from the back, starts gearing up with the speed. And as soon as she's in the air, about to make it to the other building, Joe comes out of the roof of the other building and shoots her. She manages to cling on to the edge of the other building, but there's a bullet inside of her oh stomach. Oh my goodness. And she stares at Joe, and she glares at him one last time before he pulls the trigger and kills her. And she falls all the way to the ground, and Thursday and Friday see everything. Joe has Wednesday taken to the processing center and wants to make sure nobody hears about this. Meanwhile, Saturday makes it to the agent's house and finds out that it wasn't just a one-night stand. There on the bookshelf is a picture of him and Karen. Which Karen? She can't tell, but a f***ing Karen is there. She takes a shot of vodka and starts making out with him. Friday starts working on finding out what the hell is going on. She goes through all the clues they have left. Wednesday was able to send them the funds transfer file before she, you know, fled Jerry's place. And they're sorting through it, but it only gave them more questions than answers. Why would Karen Setman transfer millions of euros to Nicolette Cayman? Why would we be funding her campaign funds? What? And why would this contract be written the day we got our promotion? Why would Monday do that? And a transfer that big? Seems like Karen Setman really needed that promotion. And the computer beeps again. Saturday was able to distract the guard long enough in bed to do a sinking of his bracelet to hers. And so now Thursday and Friday were in. They could see a lot of the bureau files and not even just that. Okay, so they could see some of the top secret stuff. So whatever Adrian, the guard, had access to, they now had access to. Yeah. And he was a pretty high up guard. The sisters could even tap into security cameras inside the bureau. And in one of the rooms, they spot her. One of their sisters crying on the bed. Leaned up against the wind, leaned up against the wall, just crying. They think it's Monday. Yeah, oh. I think it's Monday. The guard announces that he has to leave now after having sex, and Saturday tries to get him to stop. You know, honestly, she did seem like she enjoyed it, but that's besides the question. Let's uh, meet our usual day again, then, right? Talked about it, Karen. I want to see you every day, okay? Not just on Mondays. See you, babe. And with that, he walks out and Saturday rushes to call her sisters from her bracelet. She's like FaceTiming them. Can you believe Little Miss Perfect likes to be choked on Mondays? Saturday focus. Cayman is holding her hostage. What? Monday's alive? 
Yeah, be careful Saturday. This bureau agent, he could be playing us. I don't know, I don't think so, but I'm scared Thursday. What are we gonna do? Every day we set foot outside, we beat the odds, right? We're gonna get Monday, right? Thursday's like, yeah, we're gonna show the world who came in really is. And before Saturday can respond, three men rush into the home. She turns around to face them, and she slowly turns back around to face the computer where she's FaceTiming her sisters. I love, and she's shot in front of the sisters. So Adrian was there too? He left, remember? Oh, but other guards came? Mm hmm. Now there's just three sisters left, Monday, Thursday, and Friday. But not even for that long. The sisters' window glass shatters and smoke starts to fill their apartment. More grenades, more bullets, more glass shattering. Friday immediately starts importing the computer footage, every file to her bracelet. She has to transfer everything. She says this is the only proof that we have ever existed. Thursday grabs Friday and opens the secret closet and kicks through in the wall. So remember where they hide? She kicks in the wall and it leads to a second empty unit. It was presumably bought by their grandfather to make sure no neighbors moved in and heard the noises of seven children next door, you know? Mm. So it's empty, nobody uses it. She grabs Friday, even though the files haven't transferred, drags her through that unit, goes down the fire escape, but the very last second, Friday refuses to come down and actually pulls up the ladder to the fire escape so that Thursday can't come and get her. Friday, what the fuck, Friday? Get down here right now. Without a response, Friday goes back upstairs, runs into the house, puts spray paint cans into the microwave, starts the microwave, and pulls out the gas for the stove, letting gas leak into the air. And she continues to transfer to Thursday's bracelet. She calls her. Friday, get down here right now. You still have time. What is wrong with you? I transferred everything to your bracelet. It's OK, Thursday. I'm not like the rest of you. As crazy and as dysfunctional as our family was, I needed it to survive. I couldn't make it out there without you guys. Friday, please get down here now. It's time to unplug. Love you. And with that, the guards are right outside the door. The microwave dings, and as the guards open the door, the whole place explodes. And downstairs, Thursday cries out in pain as debris and ash fall down on her. She's gotta get out of there before the police get there. Unfortunately, Joe, the guard is fine and the guards that were sleeping with Karen he hears the news on his radar and rushes to Karen's house so that's interesting and he's really upset he's crying he wants to see Karen but none of the higher up guards will let him so he goes back to his van in tears wait what yeah so it seems like he didn't set the girls up and what he thought was going to be a day of sulking you know he turned it turned into his life flashing before his eyes because immediately he's being choked in his van Karen Karen, I just saw you in the body bag. Karen, what happened? You sold us out. You sold us out. What? No, Karen, what, what are you... Oh, my God. Are you Karen? Or you're not Karen. Wait, I just saw you in my apartment last night. And then I just saw you dead today. I'm a sibling. One of seven. Identical in every way. Did you sell us out or not? So... Time passes and we don't really see what happens, but it seems like Thursday fills him in on everything. You know, Thursday and Monday are the only ones left. Fills him in on all the footage of Saturday being shot in his apartment and he's screaming, I had nothing to do with it, please. You have to trust me, I love Karen. Well, Cayman is holding her hostage. If you love her, if you really love her, you gotta help me. Okay, I will. Do you have a plan? I am the plan. What does that freaking mean? Adrian is going to bring her into the headquarters in a body bag to be scanned, claiming that he caught the last Setman sister. Thursday is going to get sent into the cryo chamber or like whatever. Like she's just pretending to be knocked out and then she's going to get frozen. That's the whole plan. Mm -hmm. So he's saying he caught a sibling. So he puts her in a body bag or one of those things, drags her in, gets past the guards. She wants to get frozen or she's trying to go, just get inside? She's trying to just get inside so that okay. she can get to Monday, right? Uh -huh. And, um, you know, she's waiting as the girl in front of her is getting frozen, this little child. She's being placed in the chamber. The nurses are so kind. The child is like, will it hurt? No. They inject her, they close the chamber, and she's supposed to be frozen, right? Instead, she's completely freaking incinerated to ash. <gasps> the cryo sleep was all a lie. There is no future. Mm -hmm. They don't wake up. They just get, they're dead. Thursday is quick though, she recorded the whole thing. And when it's her turn to be taken, she pushes one of the nurses into the chamber, turns it on, and outside Adrian takes out the rest of the guards because he saw the whole thing too. 
and he's actually a good person. I guess he's not into it. And once they knock out the two nurses and the two guards together, they realize it was all a lie. Cayman killed them all. Every single sibling ever was killed. They're never gonna come back. They're never gonna live ever again. Thursday walked over to the machine and put her name down as being processed. And when they burst into the cell, they find Tuesday, not Monday. Her eye is bandaged up. What? She's shivering, shaking, scared of Adrian. She has no idea who he is. And he's just like, Karen, Karen. Mm -hmm. Thursday has to ask, where's Monday? And just in time, in walks Karen. Monday, into the office of Nicolette Cayman. Ah, Karen, have you been? I hope we've made your stay comfortable. Yes, more than comfortable. Look at us, we've all masterminded our own extinction in this planet. But through it all, through your donation and my push for parliament, we just might have another chance. Nicolette has Karen sit down to sign the contract. It wasn't signed yet, the funds transfer of millions of euros. If you're having second thoughts, I've kept one of your siblings alive as collateral. You understand, anyone who's willing to sacrifice their own flesh and blood can never be fully trusted. Karen looks shocked, but she smiles, signs the contract, which is sealed and binding. So how does it feel now to be the one and only Karen Setman? Now, Cayman has a speech in 15 minutes and she asks Monday if she's gonna be there, right? And she's like, of course. What speech? Like a speech to be like, guys, welcome to my campaign. Look at everything I'm doing. Just another boring politician speech where they do absolutely nothing. Meanwhile, One Eye Tuesday, Thursday, and Adrian are in the cell, right? Now, remember how Tuesday has red hair? Thursday is like, take off your wig, take off your clothes. And so they pretty much, Tuesday goes with her little eye bandaged and she's in um, Thursday's clothes now. And Thursday looks like Karen Setman. Because uh -huh. she's not missing an eye. Tuesday and the guard, they do their own thing. And Thursday looks exactly like Karen Setman, exactly like Monday. And she starts heading to the party, to the speech, where Cayman is about to have, you know, her little Does she know what's going on now? Yeah, I think so. So they figure it out. That's why she's going. Yeah. Well, her whole plan, Tuesday, Thursday's whole plan is to just make sure that the world knows about them. Is to get it out there. To sabotage Cayman for who she really is. She wants to show the world that Cayman is killing people. Killing mm -hmm. siblings, right? Mm -hmm. So Tuesday and Adrian go together and Tuesday pretends to be holding him hostage. Literally has his hands in the air and is pointing his gun at him, right? And the other guards, in order to cooperate, they start opening up security locked doors. The ones that gain access to the main frame, like the security rooms. Because like I said, Cayman is about to do her speech that's being live streamed. So basically, they need to hack into that main frame and play the video of the girl getting incinerated in the cryo chamber so the world can see it. And Joe is right down there next. Adrian is the only one that can hold them off while Tuesday tries to hack into the system so that Cayman's reality will be exposed. Once they unlock the room, Adrian takes the guards down, shoots them, so they have access, but there's more guards coming. They gotta be quick. Meanwhile, Nicolette Cayman is being clapped onto the stage. Thursday goes to the bathroom to vomit, and the door opens, and it's Monday. They're alone. I have to say I'm impressed, Thursday. You've never worn Karen Setman so well. Yeah, well you act like you own her and you don't, Monday. I do her justice. You all just pretend to be Karen. And she pulls out a gun. You sold us out. How could you? I thought of all people, Thursday, you would understand. Understand what? We were your family. Monday points the gun at her. What do you know about family? All these years of endless lectures and responsibility and sacrifice, I never saw you do one of those things, ever. Not once. I did everything I was told. I did everything right, and I did everything I could to protect our family. We have a very funny way of showing it. Sunday died in my arms. Wednesday fell to her death. Saturday was shot in the head. And Friday? Well, I didn't plan this. I met Adrian, and I fell in love, and things changed. I made a deal with Cayman, and it got out of my control. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Monday, that you lost your finger because of me. I was a total fuck up. If I could go back and change it all, I would. And she walks closer to Monday, and Monday starts lowering her gun, and both sisters have tears in their eye. Karen Setman was so much more than any of us. She was all of us. She was our family. But Monday cocks the gun again and points it at her. I was the firstborn. Karen Setman was always mine. Do you not get that? All of you were just the afterbirth. You were the siblings. 
Thursday tackles Monday to the ground and the two start choking each other. Meanwhile, Tuesday is busy trying to get into the mainframe servers to play the videos of the cryo chambers that are killing people, incinerating them. Meanwhile, Joe and the guards are right behind them. And Adrian is like fighting to the death. And Nicolette Kamen is on stage giving the speech of her life. In a perfect world, every child has a right to live. That's why I am running for office, to reform the law. Anyone who wants to bring a child into this world must be able to prove financial stability and be able to guarantee the emotional and physical well-being of that child. There may even be room for siblings, if the data measures up. We will continue to take positive action to build a sustainable future full of hope and possibility. Together, we will survive. And in the end, as everyone's clapping, one of the sisters, Monday or Thursday, I don't know, one of them walks into the room, to the front, and shares a wink with Nicolette. Mm -hmm. And right at that moment, Tuesday was able to get everything uploaded, and she presses the button, and the screen is taken over by the footage inside the chamber, the cryo chamber, and instead of a child being frozen, she's being incinerated. Everyone watches it in real time, and it was playing online as well, live streaming. Nicolette tries to defend herself. Th they didn't suffer. They didn't suffer. And she looks at Karen, smiling at her front row, rushes over, and snatches her hair. It's a wig. Revealing Thursday lived. Nicolette tries to choke her, and all the cameras are looking at them, and the guards take her away. What have you done? What have you done? She's screaming. Take who away? Uh, Nicolette. And out walks Monday, soaked in blood, pointing a gun. Now, it's unclear who she's pointing the gun at. Nicolette or Thursday? Uh -huh. We don't know. But Joe shoots her down before she can shoot. And Adrian shoots Joe's trying to save the love of his life, which is Monday. And as she's laying on the ground, she hears her grandfather telling her, Be brave. Set an example for your sisters. And the sisters rush over. Blood is dripping out of her. She grabs for Thursday's hands. And she says, Promise me. Promise me. Don't let them take them. And she grabs Thursday's hands and puts them down on her stomach. She's pregnant with twins. <gasps> And Thursday starts crying before Adrian comes over and he's trying to get her to stay with him, but it's too late. Monday is dead. And the screen takes over by the news. Federation-wide rioting has forced the repeal of the Child Allocation Act. Hundreds of siblings held in processing centers have been released. Pregnant women are coming out of hiding in droves, majority of them in the poorer districts. Without this appeal, many of them would have been discarded or processed the minute that they were born. Nicolette Kamen is arrested and faces the death penalty in her trial. But of course, before being arrested, she gives one last speech. This planet is the only home that you will ever know. So look around. Ask yourselves, who will continue to make the difficult decisions that will ensure your survival? My regret is that your children will never know the world that we could have built together, because that hope is gone forever now. Somehow, they were able to get Monday's kids out into like a chamber to grow them, okay? I like it, like a little sci-fi chamber with little liquids and they're like floating around, the babies. Adrian went there to visit his kids and uh, Tuesday and Thursday are standing next to him, staring into the kids' chamber. Tuesday got a new eye. I go by Terry now, by the way. And Adrian looks over at Thursday. What should I call you? Karen. Karen Setman. And Tuesday's like, Monday did this all for them. She wanted them to be safe. And they will be. They will be now. She was willing to trade in her sisters for her kids. So they think that the, the deal that she had with Nicolette was also to have her twins be able to live oh, as only children. It. Wow. And the movie ends with the noise of a baby crying when they're born. And that's the story of what happens to Monday. You know, for a sci-fi? It's good. It got emotional. And you know what's crazy? Uh -huh. Is it's so true, right? This is something that I've been feeling and it's like a very interesting feeling, right? Which is I feel like my parents would die for me and to a degree I felt like my sister and I would die for each other. And now it's so weird seeing my sister be a mom because I know that her whole life has changed. And she would probably kill us for her children. <laughs> you, and that's totally fine. I think that's most mothers. Totally fine. That's <laughs> totally fine. I'm Valid. not really butthurt about it. Like, I'm just plotting my revenge right now, actively, as we're <laughs> talking about it. But other than that, I think it's, you know, a completely normal, rational thing to do. <laughs>
But it is interesting to see my sister go from like being my sister to like this whole mother. Yeah. This like whole entity with a whole other family. And it's just like, I have really gone down her priority list, <laughs> as it seems. So that's probably what happened with Monday. So um, yeah, you better hope that this doesn't happen in real life because a lot of our siblings would be f kicking us to the side. <laughs> just pew. It's pretty good. It's really good. I liked it. It was pretty emotional. I liked it. I liked how um, each of the sisters, they were different and it was kind of cheesy. You know, they have the hacker, they have this one and they have that one, but it wasn't like so corny that they felt bland. Mm. Each of the characters were just enough lovable or just enough complexity for you to get attached to. Mm -hmm. so, so it's all played by one actress. Yeah, so um, I was thinking about that while I was watching it. Damn. So I'm thinking about her sitting at an empty table. And then hair and makeup come back. Hair and makeup come back. I was thinking about that. I mean, we gotta stop watching these behind the scenes footage of things. Have you seen the behind the scenes footage of Wednesday? You know how oh, Wednesday yeah, yeah, has the yeah. hand? The hand, yes. Yeah, so it's a full ass man who's yeah. wearing a green suit that's cut off with the hand. Yeah. And he just like follows her around and yeah. he's wearing a full green suit. I mean, and then he's gotta get in weird positions to put the hand on the table. Or the ones um, with Game of Thrones when the, the queens are looking out at their vast land. It's a green screen. <laughs> but that's it for today's video. What did you guys think of this one? Let me know in the comments and we will be back next week with a book fam. It's gonna be a long one. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.